You know, sir, I was thinking the same thing about you. I respect your talent. But I don't like anything else about you. Hello? Hi. Uh, didn't see you there. Well, I didn't hear you come in, at least. Uh, welcome to my, uh, kitchenette. Uh, allow me to give you the grand tour. And that's pretty much all there is. Uh, let me get properly dressed for this. But, uh, hi. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, today, I'm going to be teaching you how to... Oh, sorry. Hey, my name is Dante, and today I must say you look great. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make uh, three different recipes. Yeah, we are around here somewhere. It's, uh... I'm going to eat. Yeah. There are some recipe, a couple of these recipes I got on the internet years ago, back in my uh, homeschooling days. And uh, this one I got from the electric company. Not the electric company, but the electric company that pays for my electricity and you know, all that jazz. But for some ungodly reason, they send me a recipe in the mail. And this one, this one in particular caught my interest. I'm going to be teaching you how to make uh, bacon, egg, and toast cups from the uh, MarthaStewart.com uh, website. I don't know if that website is still active anymore, but, you know, they, I, I, I at least saved the recipe in printed form. Uh, I'm also going to be teaching you how to make this taco spaghetti. Not to be confused with spaghetti tacos created by the, or at least popularized by the show iCarly, but no, taco spaghetti is a completely different thing. It doesn't even require a taco shell. And finally, the impossible peanut butter cookie. And I'll explain to you why it's the impossible peanut butter cookie in a minute. No, it's not because the peanut butter is actually something else. It does require peanut butter, like actual legitimate peanut butter. But yeah, I'll explain to you why it's the impossible peanut butter cookie when we get to it. But right now, uh, let's start with... Let's start with breakfast. Now this recipe is to make like six of these cups, but I'm going to be doubling this recipe so that we can, you know, have 12 cups. Uh, this is the sort of thing that's sort of like the busy person on the go for you to make like a batch of them during the weekend. And then, once you're done, you can make a batch of them during the weekend and, you know, have them ready when you're, you know, having a busy day. The soccer moms would greatly appreciate the recipe like this. <clears throat> it's fine, it's just paramecium. I bought ingredients to make all of these things. So we'll, we'll get to each thing when we get to it. But right now, we're gonna start with uh, breakfast. I also decided to splurge myself a bit with some uh, jelly babies. Jelly beans, not jelly babies. This is a Britain. That is not gonna work. I bought these at a second-hand store, if you can believe it. The jar, not the jelly beans. A touch concerning if you bought jelly beans in the second hand store. All right, now for the food. Hello, and welcome to the voiceover. Uh, I'm gonna tell you the ingredients that you need. You're gonna need about four tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted of course. Uh, you're gonna want about 13 to 14 slices of bread. Uh, it's gonna make sense why in a moment. Uh, you're also gonna wanna need 12 slices of bacon. Uh, unfortunately, I only have about 10 slices of bacon, but we're gonna make it work. We also are gonna need a dozen eggs. Uh, uh, nobody saw that. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, 
You're also going to want salt and pepper for seasoning. Toss it over the shoulder for good luck. And let's begin. First thing you're going to want to do is flatten every slice of bread. Uh, normally you'd want a rolling pin, but I'm going to be using an energy can. Unopened, of course, because open cans are surprisingly flimsy and terrible at flattening bread. But yeah, you're going to want to roll these slices of bread as flat as you possibly can. Once you're done flattening one slice of bread, you set it aside and move on to the next. Unfortunately, it was around this time when there appeared to be a leak in the uh, energy drink. So I did the only reasonable thing that I could do and pour one out for the boys! You see kids, this is exactly why you need to splurge and buy yourself a rolling pin. While it's true that a bad artist blames his tools, it's also true that having good tools will make your life so much easier. That being said, if you don't have any tools, good or bad, you can always use the tried and true method of using your bare hands. And even though I'm wearing a white collared shirt, that right there is some blue collared craftsmanship if I've ever seen it, which I haven't. Anyway, once you're done squishing all the slices of bread, you're going to want to slice the slices in half. That is so that the smaller slices could be much more malleable to the muffin pan. Ah, I don't, it's, uh, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. Everything is cool. Yeah. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is melt your butter. Now, I did a very dumb thing and followed the recipe exactly as it says instead of doubling it like I said I was going to. This here is a classic example of the phrase, do as I say, not as I do. It's also a classic example of I make dumb decisions so you don't have to learn from my mistakes for the life of God! Preheat your oven to the hot and spicy temperature of 375 degrees. While it's preheating, grab yourself a large skillet, set the stove to a medium heat, and cook all of the bacon. No, seriously, you're going to need to cook all of the bacon, but you're going to want to undercook it. It needs to be cooked enough so that you don't risk pig salmonella, but not so cooked that you can't shape and mold the bacon into the muffin tins like a freshly opened can of Play-Doh. Now, if you don't like your bacon undercooked, or anything undercooked for that matter, first of all, respect, I completely understand. Secondly, you need not worry. For we will be baking the bacon soon. You know, if I decided to cook the cookies as I baked the bacon, this might have been the perfect video of all time in the history of ever, even outside of YouTube. But alas, I did not, and therefore it is not. And for that, I am sorry. Now, this next batch of bacon is yet another example of do as I say, not as I do. For I have made mistakes, so that you don't have to. I ended up leaving these strips of bacon in the frying pan for a little bit longer than they should have, and now they are crispier than they should be. Uh, don't mind me, I'm just gonna stress eat my feelings away. <laughs> but yeah, just keep an eye on the bacon strips as you're cooking them, otherwise they're gonna overcook, smoke is gonna get everywhere, and you're gonna turn your house into the set of a music video. And for people who like to cook on a budget, you can use the leftover bacon grease as a butter substitute for later recipes. Just make sure you have a proper filtration system when you're collecting the grease. When I first tried this, I used a paper towel and a rubber band, and it ended up creating a bigger mess than necessary. Now, if you're one of them they are rich boys, you could use a sauce brush. But a lot of people are not rich boys, so we're going to be using here a paper towel since they're basically the same thing, except one is disposable, and the other one is a paper towel. You're going to want to get your standard issue muffin tin, a nice even coating of the melted butter that we melted earlier. Just really slather it on there like you're Michelangelo and it's the Sistine Chapel. Or Jackson Pollock, but with less splatter. Then take your flattened sliced slices of bread and line them to the walls of the muffin tin's cups. And I just realized I have no idea what the different parts of a muffin tin actually are. Use whatever remaining slices of bread you have to fill in the gaps as needed. 
Use the remaining melted butter to coat the insides of the molded bread. And I just realized that molded bread sounds so much worse than it actually is. But that's neither here nor there. Place a strip of bacon on the inside of each bread cup. And if you have extra bacon, chop it up into bacon bits and use that as an additional seasoning. And now the chickens are implicated. Crack an egg over each bread cup and make sure to clean up any messes you leave behind. And trust me when I say this, you will make a mess. Exhibit A, right freaking now. As you will see in this next clip, I'm going all M&M on these eggs and having them compete against each other to find the strongest warrior. We will find our brown M&M only to then mercilessly kill that egg myself because I refuse to share the spotlight with anything else. Collecting all the shells and crushing it down into an egg-shaped egg rose, we will be using it later in this video for a different joke. Season salt pepper. Shove it into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And remember children, it is against the law to not shake your booty when placing food in the oven. After the 20 to 25 minutes have transpired, the toast should be golden, bacon crispy, and eggs shining like the silver sun. And if you did it properly like I didn't, the breakfast cups should slide right out of the muffin tray. And since we're pretending to be binging with Babish, we're gonna give this a nice cross section. And for those of you who are wondering what it tastes like, it tastes like your standard American breakfast. It's like the concept of a cupcake, but instead of that concept being associated with dessert, it's associated with breakfast. So yeah, all in all, pretty good. Now it doesn't say this in the recipe, but I like to add a little bit of extra jelly just to add a bit of flavor to it. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Do not shove half of this thing down your mouth unless you have a glass of milk on standby. Put the remaining cups in either a plastic bag, Tupperware container, or any form of storage. They can be eaten cold, and while I haven't tested if they can be reheated in the microwave, I couldn't imagine why not. We're gonna make some impossible cookies. Now, the recipe is Boy, how to use it, a recipe. Now, I'm gonna need you to grab a pen, or a marker, or a pencil, or whatever. Uh, write this down, because I'm gonna need you to be mentally prepared for this. Ready? I got this from food.com. It's made by Mystery Girl on December 7th, 2001, and it's a uh, 5.4.6 stars, right? You ready? You ready to write this down? Okay? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Okay. One cup of peanut butter give you time to write this down. One cup of sugar, just basic sugar, one large egg, and that's it. <laughs> it's just, it, that's what's so impossible about it. It's literally three ingredients. And yet it works. I've made this a bunch of times, and it works. It just works. You get all the three ingredients, you get all of the three ingredients, mix it in a bowl, and then like mold it into cookie shape onto a pan, pop it in the oven. There you go. That's it. <laughs> Let's get to making.
Eight ounce spaghetti, a pound and a half of ground beef, and a packet of taco seasoning. Two thirds cup of water, one can cream of chicken, one can diced tomatoes, and green chilies undrained. An eight ounce of Velveeta cheese sliced into cubes, and one and a half cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and boil spaghetti, and cook beef until brown. Remove Excess fat, add taco seasoning, and water to the pan. Stir for five minutes. Add Velveeta and both cans to the pan. Reduce heat, stir until Velveeta cheese melts. Stir in spaghetti, pour into an ungreased casserole. Dish cover it all with shredded cheese. Bake 20 minutes, then cool for 10 minutes. Serves up to eight people for when you have company. So yeah, those are three weird recipes that you can cook. I must say that it's been a great day, but now is the time for me to say goodbye. Goodbye.